So today I'm going to be talking about Arrow Minerals Limited. I'm going to be talking about our projects next to Simindu in Guinea. But I'll start by asking a couple of questions. You can go back and read the disclaimer later. Why iron ore? Well, for a start, without iron ore, you can't do much. The world needs steel to breathe, to construct, to build everything. All of the electrification infrastructure that's going in needs steel. All of the roads, the houses, everything needs steel. The cars, every electric car needs steel. And it also happens to be that some of the world's most profitable companies, some of the world's richest people made their money out of iron ore and steel, so we want to be a bit like them. Bauxite. So aluminium, why aluminium? Aluminium is the ultimate future facing metal. Without it, there will be no solar panels. There will be no high voltage power lines tr crossing the country or buried in the ground delivering electricity. There will be no Teslas. So we must have aluminium and we must have high quality bauxite. So the next question is why now? So, so right now, for Arrow Minerals in Guinea, we're presented with an amazing opportunity. We've recently acquired a bauxite project at Niagara, uh, and we've, we've announced a exploration target of 170 to 340 million tonnes at 40 to 46, and 1 to 4 per cent silica. Now the Guinea is the centre of the world for bauxite. It is currently home to the world's largest high-grade undeveloped iron ore project in Simindu. And the infrastructure that's being built for Simindu is going to serve multi-user multi operators and mines. So it's not a Rio Tinto railway line, it's a multi-user railway line with a very, very strong mandate and capability to service third parties like us. So that's the why bauxite. That's the why iron ore. We've got an amazing project there as well. Uh, we've reported an exploration target at Simindu North of 280 million tonnes to 716 million tonnes. That'll produce a beautiful 61 to 64% grade hematite fines. So we just crush it to minus six mil put it through a gravity plant, and it comes out at 61 to 64%. So then other people keep talking about this thing, the Pilbara Killer, Simindu. It's 4.5 billion tonnes at 64% at on our southern boundary. Well, yes, it's underpinning $26 billion US of infrastructure. That's nearly $40 billion Aussie. So there's a lot of money being pumped in. And yes, the rail capacity is going to be pretty big. They're installing double track railway line right now all the way. And that railway line's going to be commissioned next year and Rio Tinto have already started their mining. So a um, lot of infrastructure. There's going to be 120 million tonnes of port capacity built. Two car dumpers going in. So how is this not a Pilbara killer? I actually think it's a Pilbara saver. So if you sort of look at, let's look at Onslow, right? Bower Steel own a big chunk of Simindu and a big chunk of the West Pilbara project. The West Pilbara project goes 58%. It's going to be blended with their 65% material out of Simindu to give them a nice average feed grade into their steel mills of 62. So it facilitates the development of a lower grade project in the West Pilbara. So there are other places in the Pilbara where there is declining grade that's the biggest challenge facing the Pilbara right now. It's the increased incremental cost of expanding those existing operations. It's the permitting of mining below the water table. It's the cost and delays associated with land access. So actually mining Simindu, giving you access to higher grade material, gives you more scheduling and development options in the Pilbara than you had before. It allows you to eke life out of projects that would otherwise be facing just a declining grade and maybe they'd have to ask them some 
themselves some questions about whether they work. But by blending product, Simidu actually could save Western Australia. So that's the, the why bauxite, why the iron, and why now. So I'll give you a little bit of a flick through what we're up to. So, so this is us. Um, market cap's about $32 million. That's another reason why. The bauxite market is just hammering along. The iron ore market is still so very strong. Those commodity prices are very strong. We see declining production of iron ore and bauxite in China, and we see massive growth in demand for, for these products. So at $32 million, that's another reason why now. So we've got the team. So a bunch of these people, again, when I was at Atlas or, or other places, we've developed about half a dozen mines together. Um, not always in easy jurisdictions, not always with people wanting to let us onto their railway lines. Um, sometimes we'll be developed projects that's rained a lot, sometimes it hasn't, but we're used to dealing with challenges and creating value and solving problems and creating opportunities for everyone to, to do really well. So here's a map of Guinea showing you the railway line. For those of you who don't know, just grab your phone, look on Google Earth, you'll see that it's entirely cleared. The whole 672 k's is cleared. It's, there's double track rail tunnels completed. So there's 27 kilometres of tunnels been completed. Um, the port is at about 70%. Um, they basically started laying girders on bridges. You see those amazing girder machines that they've got out of China. And it's on track to haul ore in December next year. So Rio started mining. They're on track to haul ore on that railway line December next year. And on startup, there'll be 220 million tonnes of rail capacity. And in the port, they're putting two car dumpers in that'll give them 120. The obligation on the winning consortium is 30 million tonnes, and Rio is 30 million tonnes on the Symfa JV. So whatever they don't use, they'll be paying for. So I would expect there'll be spare capacity available in the early years, there'll be spare capacity in the later years, and there'll be capacity, and there is an obligation on the operators of that rower line to expand capacity to handle new entrants. So this map shows it. So part of the strategy is to go in and, and develop the assets that the company owned. And that was the Simandu North project, which abuts Simandu. But the other thing which has come to mind in, in the context of bulking up is that part of the opportunity is to develop what we have, but also as the railway line is commissioned, as we develop our first mine, we're going to be able to incrementally grow our business by developing a pipeline of projects. And that's what we did at Atlas. And that's how we went from a $9 million company to a $4.5 billion company that was making between five and $10 million a week. The opportunity in bulks as you grow your business is that with every additional operation, your operating costs drop by between 10 and 20%. So synergies are absolutely real. So, so from here, I can see those opportunities to build a substantial business. So we're going to take a calculated and staged approach to be very efficient with capital. We are the kings of low cost startups. We built our first mine in the Pilbara for $13 million. We built our second mine in the Pilbara for $15 million. Our second mine made $20 million a month. And when it started to happen, and I started to look around and see how much money could be made in bulks, I felt like it was one of the best kept secrets. And if you have a look, please take a close look at the bauxite industry. Have a look at where margins are generated, how low the operating costs are, how simple it is to just mine it and crush it and screen it and truck it and ship it. It's just like, really, like another type of iron ore. So th th this is a snapshot showing you how busy we've been. I joined the company formally in February. Since then, we drilled about 10,000 metres, about 550 holes. We identified a bunch of prospects. We've done a bunch of test work. And within about a year, we've committed to have a, a resource out and have completed our scoping study. 
and on the back of that we then transition into feasibility studies and commence the mine permitting work. And of course, available to talk to anyone about this afterwards. Um, again, this is the Niagara Bauxite project. This, we did this deal only a couple of weeks ago. So, so for some of the shareholders, I apologise, they've told me that reading my announcements is like trying to drink from a fire hose. There's a fair bit going on in the business. But this project, to give you a bit of an idea, we published an expiration target on this today for the first time. And we've quoted 170 to 340 million tonnes. Now this stuff is outcropping. It's only 100 kilometres from that railway line and there are roads that go from here to that railway line and then straight to the port you'd, we'd go. So what's that worth? Guinea produces the highest quality bauxite in the world. It's number one in the world. It currently exports 155 million tonnes per annum. Vale drilled out this project on 800 metre by 800 metre spacings in 2007. In 2007, the, the bauxite price was lower than it is today. The global demand was less than half of what it is today. And there was no railway line and method of getting the product to port, so they walked away from it. This thing has low reactive silica. It's nearly 50% higher grade than the stuff that's mined in the hills here at the back of Perth. It's got, ne that's next to no silica. This is a premium product. And if you go and look at the bauxite prices, Guinea bauxite attracts a price premium of 15 to $20 per tonne because of the quality of the product. So please, go and have a look at bauxite, have a look at aluminium and think to yourself, how is the world going to get this aluminium and how can I get some exposure and make myself and my family um, some money along the way. So a couple of graphs, you can sort of go and have a look at the bauxite market to yourself, it's, it's all out there. But, but fundamentally, for us right now, I've been able to bring together a wonderful team of people, like whether it's Marcus Freeman who I've got running around in the bush right now, or Jeremy Sinclair who's talking to all of the contractors and operators and processors and trying to figure out how to put together our first operation with a few cable ties and rubber bands and to sort of get that up and running. We're going to be drilling, we're going to be reporting scoping studies, we're going to be talking to partners. We're prepared to share. We're prepared to talk to all sorts of people about different ways to fund the project, different types of offtake, different types of joint ventures, whether it's drill for shares, all of those sorts of things. And we've done at least all of those sorts of deals two or three times over the last 20 years. So we're keen to have a good time, create value for people, and deliver something really meaningful that the whole world really needs right now. So thanks very much.